There's a plaque on this bridge across the Watson River in Congerluswak, Greenland. It commemorates Jack T. Perry, who died trying to navigate these rushing waters in 1976. Which begs the question, all due respect, Jack, but what were you thinking? The narrow passage drains a portion of nearby Greenland ice sheet into Sanderstrom Fjord. In 2012, a record melt sent water rushing through this passage and famously swept the bridge away, an event locals still remember with awe. As peak melt season approaches again, scientists want to find out what's happening to water between the surface of the ice and the ocean. Further upstream, the riverbed flattens out and a broad plain of glacier sediment, dust, and sand spread out in this dry Arctic environment looks more like Death Valley than the Arctic Circle. In a while, the road begins to rise up and low scrub covers the ground. Even with a warming climate so far, trees still don't grow in this part of Greenland. While I'm filming, my guide, Dr. Osa Renamalm, is steady at the wheel and pointing out key features of the landscape. As the first fingers of the ice sheet come into view, we can see one of the Watson sources as a geyser of glacial water shoots out between rocks. Further up the road, as the landscape gets higher and more rugged, we see a larger expanse of the Great Greenland Ice Sheet, three times the size of Texas. Near the ice edge, I spotted another rush of water shooting from the base of the glacier and managed to climb down and film briefly. Scientists are working to compare the outflow from streams like this to melt at the ice surface many miles away. That comparison will tell us a lot about how efficient the ice sheet is at removing meltwater, whether there are hidden reservoirs beneath the ice, and perhaps something about how quickly streams like these will be adding to the accelerating rise in global sea level. <laughs>